Good evening viewers of Northeast 8 to another segment of Weekly Roundup Bulletin. Starting Monday between January 15 to 18, 2024, Rahul Gandhi during his Bharat Joronya Yatra in Nagaland and Manipur criticized Prime Minister Modi for not fulfilling the commitment made nine years ago to resolve the Naga political issue, emphasizing the need for dialogue and expressed uncertainty among Naga organizations regarding the Prime Minister's stance. He pledged Congress commitment to a Naga solution and addressed issues of injustice, including illegal taxation. Gandhi highlighted his ideological vision focusing on social justice for Dalits and OBC categories, contrasting it with what he perceived as a concentration of power by the BJP. Throughout the Yatra from Taubo, Manipur to the Nagaland Lek, Gandhi engaged in impromptu outreach meets, addressing crowds and emphasizing the importance of justice, equality and unity. He criticized Modi for the lack of progress in Nagaland and Manipur, calling it a shameful lapse in leadership. Gandhi expressed commitment to amplify the voices of those affected by challenges, particularly in the Northeast, and pledged to be a soldier for the Naga people in Delhi, urging young people, especially women, to join politics for a new future. On Tuesday, fresh violence erupted in Manipur's Moray town with suspected armed militants attacking state security forces at multiple locations. Two Manipur police commanders were killed and two others were injured in the highly sophisticated attacks involving RPGs and sniper rifles. The attacks occurred near Kondong Lairambe Temple, SBI Moray branch office and between Moray Ward No. 8 and 9. In the retaliatory action, there were no reported casualties on the attacker's site. The deceased commandos were identified as Wankam Somorjit and Takalabam Sileshwar. A woman was killed in clashes with security forces and protests erupted over arrests relating to the killing of Moray SDPO CH Anand Singh. The Tengupal district reimposed an indefinite total curfew due to the volatile law and order situation. Firing was also reported at Kodruk village between village volunteers and suspected cookie militants. Concerns were raised by COCOMI about the deteriorating law and order situation in Mori, despite the presence of central forces. Women protested in Imphal demanding additional security forces for Mori. In another update, the Manipur government sought helicopters from the Ministry of Home Affairs to address emergency requirements amid continuous exchange of fire and escalating tensions. The letter from the Manipur government to the MHA highlighted the serious concern over the law and order situation, emphasizing the need for helicopters for medical emergencies and the prevailing volatile conditions in Tengupal district. One state police Personal was killed in an attack by suspected cookie militants, leading to heightened tensions and the security concerns in the region. On Wednesday, in a joint statement, eight tribal bodies under ENPO, including Chang Kule Sechang, Eastern Sumi Hoho, Kim Nyungan Tribal Council, Konyak Union, Pom People's Council, United Sangtam Likam Pumji, Tikir Tribal Council, and Yimkyun Tribal Council reaffirmed the rejection of the autonomous council offers and economic packages from the center and the state government. They insisted on their demand for the creation of frontier Nagaland territory through the Ministry of Home Affairs, considering other offers as too little, too late. Their organization sought support from the center, state, government and the Naga community for this stance, aiming to contribute to the nation's prosperity and Naga fraternity. On a different note, the central government is reportedly finalizing a proposal to double the insurance cover under Ayushman Bharat Health Scheme to rupees 10 lakh. The move aims to provide critical illnesses like cancer and transplants, ensuring adequate coverage. The announcement is expected in the interim union budget on February 1, 2024. The union health ministry plans to expand the beneficiary base to 100 crore under Ayushman Bharat PMJ, including Kisan Saminidhi recipients, construction workers, non-coal mine workers, and ASHA workers. 
the proposed increase in coverage and beneficiary base involves additional allocation of Rs 12,076 crore annually, with the scheme having successfully catered to 6.2 crore hospital admissions since its launch in 2018. On Thursday, the Working Committee of Naga National Political Groups strongly criticized Naga Hoho leaders H.K. Jimomi and Ilu Ndang, accusing them of making insensitive remarks and becoming a propaganda tool. The Working Committee alleged Naga Hoho of aligning with a once close-knit group abandoned by ENPO, Nagaland Tribes Council and Central Nagaland Tribes Council. The Working Committee said that Nagaho's narrative does not represent the sentiment of the Naga people and criticized their alleged disregard for the political reality established through negotiations with NSCN IM and Working Committee NNPGs. The Working Committee condemned Nagahoho for inconsistent stances, accusing them of misguiding the center and delaying a just and honorable political solution. The statement cautioned Naga Hoho about being answerable in the future and questioned the relevance and influence in Nagaland and beyond, suggesting a disconnect from Naga tribes and territorial influence. The Working Committee reminded the feasibility of the negotiated status paper ensuring safeguards for Naga people and ancestral lands and warned against actions hindering the Indo-Naga political solution for personal gains. On Friday, Chief Minister Nipirio stressed the urgent need for resolving Naga issue to stimulate economic growth, attract investments and enhance local businesses in Nagaland while speaking at the Nagaland International Trade Expo, highlighting the adverse impact of the unresolved Naga issue on external investments, hindering local entrepreneurs and businesses. Rio said, Approximately 90% of business activities in Nagaland are handled by individuals from outside the state, leading to limited progress in the state's business sectors, according to Rio. He proposed the Chief Minister Microfinance Scheme to empower local entrepreneurs offering loans up to 15 lakhs with contributions from entrepreneurs, the state and banks. Highlighting Nagaland's cultural richness, Rio expressed concerns over Nagaland's heavy reliance on grants, advocating for self-reliance for smaller initiatives and presenting larger projects to the central government. On another note, the Yimkyung Akira Arihaku served an ultimatum on the Department of School Education to deploy the required number of teachers in government schools across Yimkyung jurisdictions within 14 days warning drastic actions if the demand was not fulfilled, holding the department responsible for any untoward incidents during the process. The YAA highlighted the acute shortage of teachers in government schools affecting the functioning of schools and students' education in the Yimkyung jurisdiction. It stated that the teachers required for deployment in the schools include as many as 64 primary teachers, 85 language teachers, 50 undergraduate Hindi teachers, graduate teacher of English 22, SS or general 16, mathematics 20, and science 18, and 5 postgraduate teachers. It was also learned that despite several previous appeals and reminders to the principal director of school education, there has been no realistic response to address the teacher shortage till date which were put forward on June 30, 2023, and another on August 22, 23, with the latest being 18 January 2024. YAA, anticipating a resolution from the department, has directed all the federating units to restrict admission process in their respective areas, warning against any obstruction to the collective endeavor, citing legal consequences. On Saturday, Union Home Minister Amit Shah stressed inclusivity for the development of the Northeast during the launch of the book Assam's Braveheart Lachit Borpukan in Guwahati. Shah speaking on the importance of taking everyone along on the journey for the development of the Northeast, highlighted his efforts to understand the region by visiting various places. He underscored that active involvement and inclusion of all stakeholders are crucial 
for the development of the Northeast. He further appealed to the youth of Assam to support the development under Prime Minister Modi's leadership and rise above small disputes for the welfare of Assam and the entire Northeast. Shah concluded by expressing that positive decisions define leadership and the presentation of heroes like Lachit Burpukan will increase the self-esteem and consciousness of the country, contributing to India's self-reliance and full development by 2047. That's the end until the next weekend.